Hey guys, Paul Michael Kane here again with another tip and or trick inside of Photoshop and Lightroom. Today actually we're going to use both. We're going to use Lightroom to get into Photoshop and teach a concept called layer masks. And it can be kind of intimidating, but I found if you watch a tutorial that simplifies the concept of layer masks and you can then apply those steps to your own workflow and, and get into the finer dynamics of creating layer masks. I'm going to do a very simple composite to show you just how useful these things can be. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to start off in Lightroom. I'm going to jump over to the library module and show you three images I've taken for this composite. I'll go ahead and collapse this and we can make our thumbnails a bit bigger. So I wanted to do a really simple composite of taking three images of my daughter, that's Peyton, and I'm on a tripod. So every shot is the same shot. The only thing that moves is her. And we're going to composite this into a single image where we have just three of her sitting on the same wall. And that's important to get it on the tripod and make sure all the settings are locked in so we don't have any variance in exposure that we have to adjust later. Now we certainly can do that, but I want to make sure that this tutorial is going to make it very easy. So I've done all of the back end work first. I made sure all the exposures were correct. So I'm not doing anything but the very cool layer masks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select all three of these and we can go edit in Photoshop. I'm going to show you at the end of this tutorial an even easier way to bring all three of these into Photoshop for this compositing demonstration. But right now it's going to open three separate files. There's the first one, there's the second, and there's the third. Okay, so let's get into this. So I want to grab that one image of her in the middle, and I believe that was this one here, Untitled 4. Okay, there she is right there. Now we're going to start by dragging, let's start with this one. We're going to grab our Move tool, holding down the Shift key, we're going to drag this over to the other file. So now we have two layers. So I'm going to double click on my background layer, holding down the Control key. I'm going to turn the background layer into its own layer, and I'm going to call that middle. Okay, so our middle layer has Peyton right in the middle. This one I'm going to name, you guessed it, right. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this one, since we don't need that. And then I'm going to grab this one, hold down the shift with the move tool, drag it over, and she's on the left, and we're going to name this layer left. Okay, and then I'll close this file as well. No need to save it. So now we have one file open, right down here, and we have three layers in that file. I want to make these thumbnails just a bit bigger, so I'm going to pull down the Layers Panel Options and go to Panel Options. And I'm going to make those layer icons nice and big so I can see exactly what I'm looking at. All right, I'm going to drag the middle layer to the top, just like that. And now the fun begins. So what is a layer mask? The third icon you see in here is the layer mask. We're going to click on that. If you hover over it, it says add layer mask. We're going to go ahead and click on that and you'll notice what happens here is a white box appears next to your image. That is indicating that there is a layer mask over this image. Now what you want to do is you want to paint away this mask to reveal what's underneath or the left. You know what? Just because I can, I'm going to drag the right underneath the uh, the middle layer. So now we have a white layer mask. So if we paint in black, we will reveal the layer underneath. We're going to mask out the part of this image right here on the left. I'm sorry, on the right with a black brush select black, we'll get a nice soft edge brush, make sure our hardness is down to zero. And we're simply going to paint until we reveal Peyton on the right. Okay, and then when I let go of this, I'm, I'm just simply holding down the button on the mouse, you will see over here exactly where we've painted our layer mask. So we can come in here and make sure we've got every nook and cranny of her. That looks fantastic. Now we could, we could get rid of this layer mask and simply, we'll delete that. We could simply take the eraser tool, again, grab a nice 
soft brush, good size, and erase this image. So right now we're destroying pixels, we're erasing pixels. And you'll see that here, you'll see the transparency come through here. What this doesn't allow us is the ability to go back in and make edits. That's the beauty of these layer masks. We create a layer mask, paint with black, we can then come back, get her all the way back in here. If we reverse our colors, if we paint with white, we can take that away and give her a floating head. <laughs> so again, painting with black reveals that's as simple as it is. Actually, it's as simple as black and white. So black will reveal what's below in the layer mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten these two layers and we're gonna do the exact same thing for this one. We're gonna paint over here on the left and there she is. Now what if I went too far? Whoops, I just erased Peyton in the middle. I'm gonna reverse, which is keyboard shortcut X and I'm gonna paint that right back in. You wanna give yourself options when you edit in Photoshop. You don't wanna destroy pixels, although Photoshop is notorious for you know, being able to destroy pixels. You wanna give yourself the options, the workflow that give you options in creating layer masks. I'm gonna flatten those and there we go. So that is a composite. So just because I can, I see some grass on her, on her knee right here. So I'm just gonna use Spot Healing Brush Tool to get rid of those. And let's see, there's some there too. Right there, there. We could do this in Lightroom, but I'm gonna do it while we're here. All right, I like it. Zoom back out. So if I hit Save and then close it, it's gonna ask me if I wanna save it again. Absolutely, and then we go back in the Lightroom and that will then import that image right there. And, and it, it's really nice, I like it. Peyton's gonna get a kick out of this. She hasn't seen this yet. So I'm gonna just further edit it just a little bit. I'm gonna add some vibrance. And of course, I always throw in a little vignette to help lead the eye through. So we went from that to that real quick. All right, so I promised at the end of this tutorial, I would show you another way to get these into Photoshop. So if I take these three again, one, two, two, three. This time, instead of edit in Photoshop, if you go to the bottom, open as layers in Photoshop, that's gonna put all of these into one file for you. You can see it's working through the, the setup here. It just made two, there's the last one, and there's our single file. Whoop, I was adding one more, there we go. So now we have just one file open, with all three images in that one file. Very cool stuff. I, uh, I can't wait to show this to Peyton. She's gonna absolutely love it. I told her what I was doing, but I don't think she actually grasped how cool it was gonna be to see her there. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this look at layer masks. They're absolutely integral to my workflow, and I hope you got you know just a little insight in how you can use them for your own workflow. Uh, I hope you do subscribe to these channels. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these things. And uh, check out me, myself, at paulmichaelkane.com. And you can check out Lightbox Photography Cards. I hope you guys have these. If you don't, they're available at lightboxphotocards.com. Going to you know, get you looking at the world in a whole new way. Um, more to come. Please leave some comments. Tell me what you guys would like to see me do inside of Lightroom and Photoshop or even in the field. I'm hoping to get out, out of this office environment and do some like in the field shooting. I'm, I'm trying to work out the logistics of the microphone and, and the cameras and who's going to shoot it because right now it's just sitting on my desk. But I want to get out in the field and do some like tips and tricks out in the field and what you can use um, your gear for and, and different ways to use your gear and what, what isn't traditionally known as camera gear, the stuff that I use and I'm rambling because I'm in front of the camera and I always do that. Guys, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.